So thanks everyone for coming. Uh, my name is Rick Nelson. Uh, I run the technical solutions team here at Nginx. That includes things like pre-sales. Um, and today I'm going to show you a, a demo I've created to do some dynamic self-scaling of, of an Nginx configuration. Um, so I'm going to do just a few slides, then we'll get into the actual demo. So I don't know about the rest of you, but I always find fun automating t manual tasks, and so I wanted to create a demo that, sh that shows you how you can um, uh, dynamically scale and uh, deploy a, an Nginx application. Um, let's see here. I went too far. Sorry. Let's go here. Um, so just my base start with was I just wanted to deploy Nginx automatically and, um, and show how to do that. Um, and Docker is a great uh, uh, environment to do that in. I'm sure everybody here has probably already been uh, playing with Docker. So I started with you know, going to do it in Docker. And then I was going to use our dynamic configuration API of Nginx Plus, which allows me to easily uh, bring up back ends. Um, and that's pretty simple, and that doesn't take very long. What I wanted to come up with something a little more interesting. Um, so the idea I came up with was to do dynamic self-scaling. I wanted a system that would actually react to conditions automatically without me having to trigger uh, something. And so for that, I'm using our status API as well. And I don't know how many have been to our booth or seen other talks where you've seen the dashboard that comes with Nginx. But there's an API with Nginx Plus that gives you a lot of stats about what's going on in the back end. Um, and I'm using that stats API to gather that information. And I've done that with an external program that I've written. So it's using the stats API to find out what's going on. Then it can make a decision to scale up or down. And then it uses the dynamic configuration API to do that. So it's a pretty simple configuration. I've got Nginx Plus uh, load balancing. And I just created a couple of different backend nodes just to make it somewhat more, uh, somewhat more interesting. I've got Nginx Plus as a web server back in the back. That could easily have been open source, but I just choose the, because that was what I was using for everything else. And then I have Elasticsearch over there as well, just to show a configuration to more than one thing. And I've got my external auto scaling program, and we'll show this in a minute, that's actually using the API and, do, and doing the scaling. So before I get into this, just a few disclaimers. This is for demo purposes only. Um, just to show you some ideas of what you could do. It's not intended for production use. Um, if you're doing it in production, there's lots of things you would do. Like you'll see, for example, it's all on my laptop. I'm using one Docker host. In the real world, I would want to use more. I'd probably integrate with other tools. Could be Kubernetes, or you know, there's lots of other things we could do there. So let's get started with the demo. Okay. There we go. So if we go over to. Um, Docker here, we'll see that we have nothing. If I go to a Docker PS here, we'll see we have no images running. So right now, I have a basically empty system. And if we just play our dashboard here, it comes back and says it can't. there's nothing there. Um, so I've created a script, um, or a set of scripts, one of which just creates an environment. And the environment it's going to create initially is Nginx plus load balancer, one Nginx web server in the back end, one elastic search node. Do that. We'll go back to our dashboard here, and we'll see that now it's updated with stuff. And we'll see we have um, one server, two server zones. We have our Nginx web server backends and our Elasticsearch, um, and then the two upstreams. We see our backends and we for Nginx, and then we have our Elasticsearch, one each, um, and no traffic going through at this point in time. Um, and if we go back and do our Docker PS, we now see that we have um, three containers running. So again, that all, if those of you who haven't used Docker, you can see how fast it took a couple of seconds to spin up three containers very quickly here. Let me just make a note here. Um, and we can see the actual content if we go over here. I've created a very simple page. Um, and you see here, it just, it just is sending it back to a page. It basically just says where the IP, the IP of, of the back end there. Um, but we can see how easy to scale if I want to manually scale it. I have some scripts that I can run manually here. Like I can add more Elasticsearch nodes. Let's add three more Elasticsearch nodes. And we'll see over here. I'm sorry. We'll see how I now had, I had one, now I have four. And that also was very quickly. We can just as easily remove some of those. Let's remove two of the ones I just created. And we'll see they go away. So again, this is all using the, the, both the APIs to, uh, to see what's going on here. I can also add some more web servers. We'll see that in a minute. It does the same thing. Um, I can remove them as well. Um, so let's actually take a look at the scripts really quickly, just so you can kind of see what I'm running here. So that script just runs three other scripts I have. Again, create a load balancer, create a web server, create an Elasticsearch node. 
And if we look what I run for the load balancer, so again, it's pretty simple. I just kind of point to where my config file is and where my content is, and I'm just creating a container, calling it my Nginx Plus, and I'm using an image called Nginx Plus Load Balancer. And I'll show you in a minute what I created. I have a base Nginx Plus image, and anybody who's on our website, I, I have this in a blog post, and it exposes ports 80 and 443. For this one, I wanted to expose some more ports. 8080 is what I'm using for my status API, and 9200 for Elasticsearch. So we'll see how I took that base image and just exposed a couple of more ports for that. And then I'm mapping, because this is a very simple demo. I only have one. I'm just mapping the, the ports directly, so 80 to 80 and, and so forth. And then we can see when I add the web server, for example, it's just a generic script here. Where I, it basically uh, calls another one called add node and tells it to add a web server. And add node is, again, these are all pretty simple scripts, as you'll see. It basically grabs the image I passed in here and, and, and creates it. So again, in this case, I've created yet another image for my web server. Uh, I don't need the extra ports, but I want to have each web server having its own content. And that's because I'm doing health checks on those, and I, I want each to have a page so I can ha set it up up and down. So I'm copying in that. And I'll show you the Docker file in a minute for that as well. Um, and then we have a similar script for remove nodes. So you see, all the scripts are pretty simple. And they all tend to call, do something with Docker. And then this is actually, I meant to show you, this is the API that says add a node to the upstream. So it calls that the local, local host is where Nginx is running here. Um, and it says that it add an, uh, uh, this server and that IP to this, um, to this Docker host. Okay. Yeah. I think I've shown you all the scripts. Oh. So we can also see that, again, the Nginx configuration for this is pretty simple. So I'm actually going to skip over that in the, uh, because of the lack of time we have here. Okay. But I can look at the Docker files. If we look at, this is my base image that I start with. Uh, okay. Let's just do it. Typing is not always good. So this is, a, again, this is a, 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 you can get the open source image off Docker Hub right away. Uh, if you want to get Nginx Plus, you create your own Docker file, and that's because it has to come from our own repo. Um, and all this is doing is doing the install. And if you have played with Nginx Plus, you would notice all these ones of getting the various search and keys and so forth and doing the install. And it exposes 80 and 443, so it's a very basic uh, configuration file. Um, and then for the, uh, the load balancer one, my typing is not so good today. We'll see now we have a really simple Docker file that just says grab that and add and um, expose two different ports. And similarly, we have one for um, the web server. And here, again, we're grabbing the base image, but we're copying the content. So it's a really nice way with Docker. I can start with this base image and then create different images for different purposes. Okay. So let's actually see something happen here. So I've created a script that runs Siege. I don't know if any of you have used the Siege load, uh, load generation tool. But I've written a simple script that runs an infinite loop, um, and that each time it goes through the loop, it generates a random number for how long to run and a random number for how many connections to open. So you'll see the load go up and down. So we'll go ahead and run that. And now we should see the load start going there. You'll see over here the request per second. So now is the more fun part of the demo, at least what I think is the fun part. And that's I want to auto scale um, this, this thing. And I want to keep the request rate between 10 and 12 requests per second. So I've written, again, a program in Python that checks this. And when it sees that the average, per, the average rate per ac active node is below 10, it'll scale down. Above 12, it'll scale up. So we can run that now. And now we should see some nodes start popping up here. And now we'll see it's going to add more. And I've told it to uh, always have at least two, never more than 10. Uh, it can add up to four at a time and take away two at a time. So I've just done that. So you'll see it go up and down constantly as we, as we, as we do the load here. And I've set it to do active nodes, because um, you don't want to or I didn't want to count in my uh, calculation a node that's not working. So I've also created so, so I can do health checks here. So we're going to grab a, a port. I'll explain why I need to grab the port in a minute here. 
sorry. So I've created, what I did for health checks is a lot of our customers write a page in PHP or something, a status page that does some checks that might do a read from the database and so forth. And then it passes back, you know, status equals OK or status equals error. So I've mimicked that here, although I'm using static files. So I've got a, a, a status, a health check that HTML page, and I have a good version and a bad version. So I've written a script, again, another very simple script here. I'm sorry, I want to go here. And if we look at, uh, what did I call it, set error. Uh, we'll see it just grabs, you pass in a port, and that's all you're doing here. And then it finds the container with that port. And it does a Docker exec. So I go into that Docker, and I copy the bad file uh, over the, the file. And then I have a fix error one. So we can do that. The reason I grabbed the port a minute ago was so I knew what port to do. So we'll pass that port in that we copied from here. And we should now see the first one here is going to go um, red pretty quickly. There it goes. So now we see that that one's failed. And we'll see that it's going to have to add more nodes to compensate. So there's an add. So it's going to try to add more nodes and so forth. And we can fix that as well. Or we can let's just go in and we'll kill the uh, low generating. And we'll see the low go to 0. And we're going to see it scale back. And again, I told it to go always have 2. But again, it's two active nodes. So we can go and fix that error that we just set. And it should go green here in a second. Oh, there it goes. And you see, as soon as it went live, my auto scaling dropped one away. So now I'm down to two. So that's it for the demo. I'm happy to answer any questions. Hopefully, that was interesting. Again, it just kind of show you the kind of stuff you can do with APIs and, and, and with Docker. Um, and how easy it is to, uh, to really deploy and, uh, move and scale up and down. Okay. So. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Is there, uh, let's just get the mic for you. Hi, I'm not sure if this has uh, been answered in some other session, but is there a way to have uh, uh, high availability with that setup with the Nginx uh, load balancer? Yeah, the, with, with Nginx Plus, we deliver a script that uses Keep Alive D to create an active passive pair. Um, yeah, separate from this, so I mean, the Keep Alive D will will uh, move any any of the virtual IPs you have from to the backup node if the primary fails. So this, I guess, demo in some ways can replace something like an AWS ELB setup, where you uh, serve out content. Well, again, I'm I'm scaling the back ends. If you, are you talking about scaling Nginx itself? I mean, having a Nginx HA. Yes. Yeah. So the, in in AWS, uh, we actually are very often sit behind ELB. If you want high availability, like you want to put Nginx in different availability zones, ELB is the easiest way to make it highly available. Um, if we do have customers who do replace EOB, but they're usually running smaller apps, so they're happy to be in one availability zone. Um, but if you want to run HA and EOB, uh, HA and AWS, um, but you want to do the, the layer 7 stuff that Nginx does that EOB doesn't, you usually actually put us behind EOB. So EOB is just handling HA. All the actual heavy lifting of the traffic is handled by Nginx behind EOB. OK, OK, cool. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? If not, I think everybody can head off to lunch. Thank you very much. <laughs>